My name is David Black, and I propose to create a school based on the theory of creative flow by Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi and positive psychology by Martin Seligman. After World War II, when his father was the Hungarian ambassador to Italy, Mihaly saw firsthand how most people were devastated by the war, turned into hollow shells by suffering and deprivation, whereas some seemed more resilient. Mihaly left Europe in the 1950s to study psychology at the University of Chicago. He was interested in human achievement and how some people persist through challenges to become top athletes and artists. Although creative people have many ways of approaching creativity, he discovered that their experiences during peak creative moments are remarkably similar. He came to refer to this optimal performance as creative flow. Here is how he describes flow. Uh, regardless of the culture, regardless of education or, or whatever, there are these seven conditions that seem to be there when a person is in flow. There's this focus that once it becomes intense, leads to a sense of ecstasy, a sense of clarity. Exactly what you want to do from one moment to the other, you get immediate feedback. You know that what you need to do is possible to do even though difficult. And sense of time disappears, you forget yourself, you feel part of something larger. And once those conditions are present, what you're doing becomes worth doing. Flow occurs when an individual undertakes a task with a balanced mix of challenge and personal skills. To understand this, let's look at a chart with an individual's skill level as the horizontal axis and the challenge level of the task as the vertical axis. The possibilities fall into eight categories. Flow occurs when both skill level and task challenge are high. When a person has high skills, but the challenge is moderate, the person feels in control, but not challenged. They are in their comfort zone. When the challenge is high, but the skill levels are only moderate, the person will feel aroused or motivated to develop higher skills to meet the challenge. If skill levels are high, but task challenge is low, then individuals will feel relaxed. The task is too easy for them. When skill levels are low, but challenge is high, the individual feels anxious and inadequate for the task at hand. If challenge is low and ability moderate, a person will feel boredom, and the task takes on a negative connotation. Moderate challenge and low skill leads to worry. Finally, low skills and low challenge leads to apathy, where there is little desire to undertake the task. Flow is the optimal state for creativity. Other states can lead to flow if conditions are changed. For people who are in the state of control or boredom, they have high skills, but not enough challenge. They need to push themselves out of their comfort zones and increase the level of challenge to move into flow. For people in a state of anxiety or arousal, they have high challenge, but not enough skills. So gaining new skills will allow them to reach optimal performance. Using the school ecology model of Elliot Eisner as an organizing principle, let's see how creative flow can be applied to schools. Let's intentionally design a system where creative flow is built into the very fabric of the school. We'll call it the Academy for Creativity. To maximize creative flow and peak learning, students must be provided with high levels of both skill and challenge in their classes and projects. The Academy will increase student skills for creativity, self-expression, and communication in every course. They will learn brainstorming and idea evaluation, conceptual blockbusting, engineering design, media design, and computer programming. As they gain skills, they will become less anxious and more creative. To increase challenge, the Academy will conduct a series of projects and problem-based learning experiences, such as daily puzzle and engineering challenges, proposal pitches, STEAM showcases, coding challenges, authentic data analysis opportunities, and media design competitions, all tied to content themes. This will reduce boredom and move students out of their comfort zone and toward flow. To further encourage flow, the Academy will intentionally identify and eliminate barriers to creativity, such as overly rigid curriculum, lack of time, resources, and training, and distractions that would break students out of flow. Teachers will receive frequent and effective 
professional development training and be exemplars of creative innovators. To realize these intentions, the Academy for Creativity will be structured to support flow experiences. There will be several central creation hubs that will be a combination of makerspace and computer technology centers with classrooms arranged radially around each hub, set up so students can easily move from classroom space to makerspace. Students will spend most of their time in the creation hubs. Each hub will be specialized with a science and engineering hub, an art studio hub, a fabrication shop, and an audio-visual studio. These hubs will be provided with ample equipment, materials, technologies, and software needed to realize any type of creative vision. The creation hubs will be built with sufficient storage and display spaces to rotate and display student projects. This will encourage creative thinking as students see exemplary projects. To enable these structures, sufficient time for training and creativity will be built into the school's schedule. Traditional bell schedules will be eliminated and open time will be provided each day as genius hour time for personal and group projects, skills training and practice, and public presentations without the distraction of bells. Each student will have their own space and a custom-built desk for working on projects where they can focus on creativity free from distractions. The classroom areas will be designed as conference rooms for small group discussion and instruction open to any group to utilize as needed. As students become adept at brainstorming, project planning, and other innovation processes, these areas will become centers of active, engaged collaboration. As students learn media design skills, they will create videos, newsletters, posters, and other communications that will promote school activities and programs. Frequent community involvement events will be scheduled where students can publicly display and present their projects, promote the school, and demonstrate mastery. Parents and other community members will be invited into the school as mentors, and students will be out in the community through service projects, field studies, and tours. All of this will promote openness, involvement, and lead to a synergistic community flow. State standards will be implemented through projects and hands-on experiential activities aligned through content themes that cross multiple disciplines. These thematic projects will provide opportunities for flow. They are autotelic and engaging by nature. Students will be motivated to learn what they need in order to complete authentic projects. Teachers will become facilitators and mentors, training skills and teaching facts only when needed by students. An essential part of the curriculum will be positive psychological skill building, including a growth mindset, resilience, problem solving, ideation, evaluation, and synthesis. Students will learn skills for leadership and collaboration, logic and critical thinking, communication, executive functioning, and media design such as image creation, video production, and 3D modeling. The teaching strategies that will best lead to creative flow and innovation must occur in a safe yet challenging environment to minimize anxiety and boredom. Multiple methods will be allowed for demonstrating mastery, and all projects will be based on testing and revision, so that success will be an iterative process and failure a means to achieve success. Students will be taught to critique each other's projects and provide constructive feedback couched as positive, accountable suggestions. The entire school will act together as a supportive community of learners that model and encourage creativity. All classroom activities will be chosen and directed by students. By providing this positive atmosphere, the distractions and worries of most students will be minimized and greater creative flow will occur. Ultimately, through encouraging flow, students will move from passive learners to active learners and on to creative innovators capable of solving world problems. All of these intentions, structures, curricula, and pedagogies will not lead to creativity without purposeful, effective evaluation. State-mandated end-of-year paper and pencil tests must be abolished in exchange for frequent, formative, and practical summative assessments tied directly to project specifications. Students will create a final presentation for each project that will be shared before a public audience and for which they will receive feedback. For each project, 
A carefully constructed rubric will detail the specifications and expectations, and projects will be assessed and revised frequently. Teachers will meet with each individual student at least once per week to go over the student's goals and project deadlines and to make suggestions. Grading will be mastery or competency based, not by simply completing some worksheet. Each content unit for each subject will provide a matrix with unit concepts listed vertically and methods for demonstrating competency horizontally. Students will have the choice of which types of projects or methods they will use to demonstrate mastery of the unit concepts. All methods will be valued. A student could write and perform an original song, work with a group to perform a play, write a poem, design a review game, build a virtual or physical model, edit a video or animation, and so on. They will be encouraged to stretch themselves and only allow to use each method once, then try something new. This will enable the development of skills while also pushing students out of their comfort zone and into flow. Our economy is driven by creative innovation. Yet our current school system does not adequately teach creativity and in many ways actually stifles it through autocratic administration, rigid curricula, and mandated tests that force teachers to teach to the average bell-shaped curve. We have created a generation of students who cannot think for themselves and are obsessed with getting the right answer. They do not have the resilience or skills to creatively solve problems. With one failure, they give up. Instead of a plague of anxious or bored or apathetic students, we need to develop students who can face challenges, have the skills to think outside the box, and see initial failure as a growth opportunity. Mikhail Shikzetz Mikhail and Martin Seligman's philosophy of positive psychology and creative flow offers great promise as a model for developing resilient, positive, productive, creative innovators. If you think that my proposal is impossible, I have already implemented many of these ideas in my own science classrooms, and the results have been remarkable. My students have shown an unprecedented level of creativity. All the photos that you've seen in this presentation are of student projects that they've created themselves or from teacher workshops that I've attended. It is possible to emphasize creativity and positive psychology in the classroom. Thank you for watching.